want you to hit me as hard as you can. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The fight is about to begin. He is the law. Time to settle this case of dueling dreads. Both the 1995 movie Judge Dredd and 2012's Dredd were big screen R-rated adaptations of the classic character from the British comic magazine 2000 AD. But who's the real top cop of Mega City 1? There's only one way to find out. Face off! Disclaimer, no actual science was used to determine the outcome of face-off. Your results may vary. Please do not consume face-off if you are allergic to conjecture, opinion, or general nonsense. In this corner, Hollywood heavyweight Sylvester Stallone. He's an action movie veteran who has given us such cinematic icons as Rocky Balboa and John Rambo. Not to mention Ray Tango, John Spartan, Gabe Walker, Marion Cobretti, Machine Gun Joe Viterbo, Barney Ross, and of course, Lincoln Hawk. And in this corner, genre middleweight, Carl Urban. His experience may have started small with appearances on Hercules and Xena, but he quickly became a reliable and familiar face from The Lord of the Rings, Chronicles of Riddick, The Bourne Supremacy, Star Trek, and more recently, Thor Ragnarok and The Boys. Fucking Thorbon. This round goes to... Director Danny Cannon's notable non-Judge Dread credits include I Still Know What You Did Last Summer and A Whole Lot of TV Work. Screenwriter Steven D'Souza's name is associated with some movies that are classics, Die Hard, a few that are not, hey. and however you choose to categorize Street Fighter. Now who wants to go home and who wants to go with me? Director Pete Travis's other main feature was the thriller Vantage Point, and he also followed Dread with TV work. Writer Alex Garland may not have Die Hard on his resume, although Dread certainly feels like a variation. He's no slouch. Garland wrote the novel The Beach, adapted by Danny Boyle, along with 28 Days Later and Sunshine, and Ex Machina and Annihilation, both of which he also directed. Rumor has it he was also heavily involved throughout production of Dread, to the point he may have deserved a co-director credit. This round goes to... Stallone's Dread is supported by the competent Judge Hershey and Chief Justice Fargo, along with irritating criminal sidekick Herman Fergie Ferguson. While Diane Lane and Max von Sydow are pretty much always awesome, their inherent awesomeness is overshadowed by the incessantly obnoxious comic relief of Rob Schneider. Greg, you may want to watch this seat after we get off the bike. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Urban's Dread is partnered with Anderson, played by Olivia Thirlby, a rookie judge who has psychic powers thanks to a genetic mutation from post-apocalyptic radiation exposure. Anderson skillfully assists Dredd by mentally identifying criminals and shooting the absolute fucking shit out of numerous bad guys. She ultimately graduates her first day's test, earning herself a judge's badge. This round goes to... Rico, played by Armand Desante, is Judge Dredd's homicidal genetic brother. Thanks to a shady chief justice, Rico breaks out of prison and chews the hell out of scenery. You betray the law! while his identical DNA is used to frame Dredd for murder. Fine, Rico. Ma Ma, played by Lena Headey, is a former prostitute turned crime boss who's the source of Slow Mo, the city's new highly addictive but visually interesting narcotic. What she lacks in emotional expression, she makes up for in pure ruthlessness. This round goes to... Stallone's Dread contends with the corrupt Judge Griffin, rogue scientist Ilsa Hayden, a cool, hulking ABC war robot, and the comic-accurate Angel Gang, a family of cannibal mutants living in the cursed Earth. 
Besides a quartet of crooked judges, Urban's Dread has to deal with Ma Ma's twitchy tech expert and torture victim and her heavily armed clan of amusingly ineffective henchmen. Unfortunately, the movie immediately discards the more colorful gang variations in the Peachtree's block, replacing them with an army of interchangeable goons who apparently got their wardrobe from the clearance rack at Mega City Walmart. This round goes to... Judge Dredd's helmet and oversized shoulder pads bring his outfit close to the comic version. Well, maybe not that codpiece, but Stallone unforgivably ditches the famous uniform for good after 15 minutes of screen time in favor of blue contact lenses and a really tight v-neck t-shirt. Dredd dials down the cartoonish costume for less ornate, more practical body armor, suitable for a street cop who gets shot at on a regular basis. But perhaps most importantly, like his comic counterpart, Urban never removes his helmet. This round goes to... Everyone in Judge Dredd seems appropriately familiar with his reputation. The name Dredd immediately incites quivering fear or anxious bravado. His fame is even recognized out in the cursed earth. Oh Lord! <laughs> you have blessed us indeed! Aside from the mercenary judges who show up to eliminate Dredd, for some reason, nobody here seems to know Mega City 1's top lawman. This is a direct contrast to the comics, where Dredd's name and presence are instant cause for alarm among the city's population of perps. This round goes to... The Judge Dredd script desperately tries to give Stallone a witty catchphrase. I knew you'd say that. I knew you'd say that. I knew you'd say that! And it clumsily attempts to humanize a character that is essentially the embodiment of fascist satire on the page. Nobody wanted Judge Sad. I want to know what happened. I judged him. Urban's Dread delivers his appropriately few words in his best deadpan growl. And as for you, Mama, judgment time. And keeps the character's perpetual frown. While this script almost entirely strips the satirical elements of the comics, this dread remains the impassive, relentlessly violent personification of Mega City One's law. Yes, I believe I can make a difference. Admirable. This round goes to... Judge Dredd depicts an overcrowded, multi-tiered, high-tech metropolis filled with hovering vehicles and ubiquitous advertising. In the occasional block war, this Mega City one practically looks like it jumped off the comic pages. Aside from glimpses of neon, here it's mostly all concrete, grime, and sickly green lighting. Basically, this megacity looks like Cape Town, South Africa, with a few extra-large skyscrapers. That might be a more accurate possible future, but not a very interesting visual. This round goes to... Stallone's judge efficiently blasts a bunch of block war troops and one sports car and dispatches the vicious Angel Gang almost single-handedly. But then his dread gets knocked around and nearly chucked off the Statue of Liberty by his clone bro. Urban's dread melts a guy's face with a hotshot round, sets a bunch of dudes on fire, tosses Ma Ma's henchman off a balcony, throat chops a double-crossing judge, calmly patches up a gaping bullet wound, guns down about a hundred armed flunkies, and passes the death sentence on drug overlord Ma Ma with a 200-story plunge. This round goes to... Thanks to an extensive budget and designs that more effectively realized the heightened reality aesthetic of Mega City 1 and the bleak surroundings of the cursed Earth, Judge Dredd got just about everything right, except the lead character. Sylvester Stallone may have been an action god in his prime, but he's the wrong guy for this role. The movie's attempts at a mystery are tedious, and his comedy swings too broad. Why are you taking off his clothes? We don't have time for this. And Dredd himself is nearly unrecognizable from his comic counterpart, which leaves us with a glossy but hollow futuristic shoot-'em-up. As for Dredd, it's a decent sci-fi spin on Die Hard, and the grounded and grim approach make it a satisfying action flick, just not a particularly good Judge Dredd movie. Explain. With a Mega City 1 that bears little resemblance to the comic, it seems preoccupied with trying to ride the 3D trend with its time-dragging drug trips, and the budgetary limitations confine Urban's dread to a single nondescript skyscraper for most of the running time. 
which seems like a wasted opportunity when the comic character is mostly defined by his interactions with the ludicrous population and situations of the sprawling metropolis. The two movies turned out to be on equal footing in some ways. Neither really deserves any awards for directing or storytelling, and both barely grossed their production budgets at the box office. As far as successfully adapting the comics, they're almost two halves of one great Judge Dredd movie. But ultimately, the edge goes to... Dredd. In the battle of these judges, he is the law. Yeah. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our Joe Blow Videos channel. Tell your friends who like this sort of content and turn on the bell to receive notifications for all our latest videos. We are an independent company and we appreciate your support.